find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry, spark, but I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail, dollar set. Never said I was a gangster or a thug, but I'm an animal. Pizza for the taste of the pizza. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Uh, coming from you, Pittsburgh, PA, and the Mayhem Studio. And uh, we talk indie wrestling on here. I, I produce some stuff for the IWC, Renegade Wrestling Alliance, and some other productions over at IndieWrestling.us. Uh, with me uh, from San Antonio, Texas, he is the voice of uh, Inspire Pro Wrestling. He's Eamon Payton. How you doing, buddy? Uh- Fantastic as always, so I'm trying. <laughs> a little, little internet laggy, but that's okay. We'll work through it. Uh, you got some time here. Uh, check it out. The show is at WrestlingMayhemShow.com with a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, Indie Mayhem Show along with the Wrestling Mayhem Show proper, uh, WWE Raw Wrap-Up, Midweek Wars, all kinds of articles, Mayhem Mania, try to make sense of that, and so much more. Um, you can also drop us a line, good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, questions for our guests, any guests you think we should be talking with. 412-206-WMS0 is the hotline. And, uh, and, and, and yeah, and check it out. We're live around a lot, a lot of times after 11 p.m. Eastern time, live.wrestlingmamshow.com. The fun begins at 9 p.m. Eastern time at that address. Uh, we can join us for a Wrestling Mayhem Show and a Night of Mayhem on Podcast Day here at SorgatronMedia.com. Uh, so, uh, we, uh, so we had a switcheroo. I thought I was getting ahead of us to get uh, somebody on for next week and do a pre-record, but we had a little schedule snafu. So uh, you're about to listen to our interview that we had with Max Out, some great guys. Uh, we did a music video, uh, helped them out uh, with some camera work for this video for Kayfabe with Virgil. We have some virtual stories coming up. Uh, now, at the time, we thought that this was going to release next week, so um, you're going to hear some weird, timely references to last week's wrestling mayhem show uh so just flip that in your head we're time traveling and let's go check out our talk with max out hey guys we're hitting a time warp here uh and and more ways than one i'm rocking my max out t-shirt right there for you guys on the video Um, yeah uh, yeah and right here with two (laughs) Rocking guys, we got Stosh and Elliot with us in well, one in the studio. Stosh is in the studio, uh, yeah, he's still in the studio. If you're on Wrestling Mayhem show last week, uh, he, just, he won't leave, he, it's the pizza, right? Hey, I find a good basement and I stay, that's how these things work. <laughs> there you go. And also with us on the line from I have parts unknown or something the like that is Elliot. Detroit. I'm in the ninth circle of Detroit right now. <laughs> ninth circle of Detroit, that sounds right. How's the water up there? <laughs> Um, it tastes like metal, oh. but I still drink it. I'm all right. That's all right. And the more metal, the better, right? These guys are are, are behind Max Out, a, a new band that I got to I got to check out. I got to uh, meet personally in a very interesting uh, circumstance a while uh, about a month and a half ago, wasn't yeah. it that we we, we first uh, connected? Um, but uh, of course, you know, we, we had some conversations on Wrestling Mayhem show in last week's edition. But um, I wanted to get into what you guys are doing and and maybe this will be a good opportunity for virtual stories because now you guys have one uh, very much so and you get to show part of that in this video uh first of all can you guys just tell me max out what are you guys doing well we're playing some uh some pretty good hard rock for the people and um really to tie this into the wrestling mayhem show the first single that we uh put out there with a video on it is a song that goes by the title of kayfabe which i'm sure this audience knows what that means pretty well and um and just to come full circle with how mike sorg got involved with us is we had the grand idea for our music video to have one wwe wwf legend virgil come over and hang out in my basement in the actual place where I live so that he actually knows where I live. And <laughs> so that's a difference. I, I, I went to his house to film something. We didn't have him come here. So. You're a much smarter man than me. <laughs> I'm, he's probably slowly driving around my, my block right now just waiting for me to come outside so he can regale me with some more stories about Andre the Giant and his lady friends and <laughs> everything else he told me, including Rocky Johnson and Tony Atlas having heat with one another. But um, yeah, that's that's our connection with Sorg. I, after inviting Virgil over, 
over to hang out in my basement. I was like, well, you know what? I might as well spread the love and invite another person I've never met before to come out and hang out in my basement. So <laughs> we had Mike Sorg over there, the man behind the camera, and um, we we filmed the video 4K Fabe. And really, the idea for that portion of the video, if you do watch the video, there's two stories that are being told, and one of them's through the uh, through ECW action figures, as you'll be able to see. And then the other the other story is really about Virgil, and we do a spot with the the uh, the Virgil autograph table, and we have Virgil join our band because you know er- everybody's got a price, and our, we needed a drummer, so we had to we had to name a price and get one. <laughs> but um, I don't know, Elliot. Do you want to add some some information about the old kayfabe video that we were filming? Yeah, sure. So. A long, long time ago, Stash and I, uh, we we always wanted to make a, a music video for this particular this particular song because the content was so juicy and ripe for it. So we uh, we had always thought like, oh man, it would be so awesome if we just got like had an awesome wrestling show and taped it and and uh, and put it behind our music, so to speak. But um, it never really we we realized that was going to be really expensive. And as it so happened, I was at an animation festival and they were before the animation festival started, they were showing these old 90s commercials for action figures. And I was like, dude, I texted Stash. I was like, we're going to make the kayfabe music video with action figures. And uh, <laughs> and then he was like, I got a better idea. Why don't we have Virgil be in it too? And then like both these ideas kind of came together. And uh, the resulting music video was the what we uh, what we put together. Wow! <laughs> so so we usually uh, obviously big wrestling fans, right? Uh, so tell me, what were you guys' first uh, kind of memories and recollections of getting into pro wrestling? Well, for me in particular, my dad um, and I probably shouldn't admit this on a uh, a medium that can be reproduced in in a, in a court of law. But we are Creative Commons. So oh, okay. It, so it can go everywhere. All right. Sounds good. So my my when I was a kid, my dad at one point got the cable to scrambler. Uh, I'm not sure how he did that. <laughs> so pay-per-views just be, were wide open for us to watch. Mm-hmm. And so one of my first forays into professional wrestling was just accidentally stumbling across the Royal Rumble 91 and just marking out because I thought Hogan was legitimately going to lose to Earthquake John Tenta. God rest his soul. Oh. Yeah, it was uh that was that was pretty much my introduction to it. So I was definitely front and center for the the superstars era. That was the hook for me. My dad, being the kind gentle soul that he is, decided to smarten me up like a week later too. He just didn't waste any time. He was like, <laughs> It's fake. It's stupid and it's fake. And him, and him him disapproving obviously made me want to watch it even more. So <laughs> it had the opposite of the intended effect in my personal case. <laughs> wait, wait, does that mean people actually get to the scrambles to watch something other than wrestling? <laughs> well, in my dad's case, you could watch pay-per-view movies at the time. So oh, like yeah. you could get like, I remember we had, we would just record them all the time. Cause that was back in the day when like you actually recorded things with VHSs. Yeah. And we had, um, the last, uh, Indiana Jones movie and, and the, and the <laughs> Michael Keaton, Batman movie. It was in UHF. So it must've been like whatever year that was. <laughs> It was that summer, if that was 90 or 91 or 89, somewhere in there. And uh, yeah, so that's what my dad was using it for. So I think he was probably pretty ang- angry because he wanted to watch UAF- UHF for the 98th time. And I was watching the Royal Rumble 91. So, <laughs> What about you, Elliot? What's your earliest memory? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This is so. Am I, am I disconnected? Uh, you're, you're frozen a little bit, but I think you're back. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I had a little bit of that superstar era, but for me, my my big memories of wrestling were like freshman year of high school and um, turning, I think it must have been like Channel 5. I'm originally from Los Angeles, and it would have been like Channel 5, I think, really late at night, ECW, <laughs> like right after Dawson's Creek, I think. <laughs> and uh, what a combo. I saw... I. Um, I lost my, uh, my poop 
when I saw this because I had never seen anything like, like I had never seen anything like this before in my life. And I was like, Oh my God. And like, even then I was like, man, how are they just straight up playing all these songs? <laughs> that was one of the things <laughs> I, I, I like totally freaked me out too. It was like, they're like straight up playing like all these copywritten songs and I'm sure they're not paying any royalties. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they were, but that was like the first thought in my head. It was just like, I had never seen anything like it before. I was so hooked though. And I was watching it every week on, you know, after that. And then obviously at the same time, they had the Attitude Era in WWFE at the time. So I was I was totally into that as well. But those were kind of like my my formative years of being totally into wrestling. Awesome. And of course, you know, as we, we talked about it, now, you're uh, an awesome band and 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 hanging out with Virgil. Uh, <laughs> all of our dreams so have come it, true. All of our dreams have come true. Exactly <laughs> right. Um, it sounds like you guys are about from the same era that I am. I think uh, where you, know, you grew you grew up watching Virgil, right? Yep. So I mean, I mean, it kind of made sense. And of course, yeah. you know, he's local, right? Uh, you know, and and, and I guess accessible um, yeah. <laughs> in some more places than one would expect. Um, so 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 I, well, we have to get into this one. <laughs> I don't know. You said you have some Virgil stories. I think we, we both, we, we all three of us encountered one big Virgil story here. Um, what was it like to work with Virgil? It sounds like such a, like, yes, we're that podcast now. What was it like to work with Virgil? I don't, I don't ask Zach Gowan, what was it like to work with Hulk Hogan? But I'm going to ask you what it's like to work with Virgil. Absolutely. I, I got a few stories up my sleeve. Um, it was, it was really surreal because basically I'll start with this particular story, and that's Elliot and his girlfriend had come down to film the video, and um, so they were staying at a hotel, and you know we had all agreed on 10 o'clock in the morning on Sunday to actually start the filming, and I was convinced that you know something was going to go wrong, Virgil wasn't going to show up, or he was going to be late, or I was going to get a panic phone call and have to explain how to get to my house, you know, from the from the directions I gave him, but um. At nine in the morning, an hour before we were supposed to start filming. Yeah, I think my call time was 10. Yeah, yeah. At nine in the morning, I, I hear a knock on my door, and I was just under the assumption that it was Elliot and his girlfriend showing up, you know, a little early just to go over some stuff and to help with setting up. So I didn't even look out the peephole or anything. I just went and I opened up the door, like, without even looking outside. And uh, the first thing I heard was, Gorilla Monsoon always told me. In show business, you got to show up an hour early because plans change. And like, I just jumped back because it was it was so surreal. That's how he introduced himself. Yeah. And you guys, so, had, and you guys had met at this point, no, right? No, okay. I, I had never met him. I didn't know him from I, from Adam. And I, I opened up the door and there was this man standing in a Under Armour, like gray onesie uh, sweatsuit and regaling me with... The, you know, this life lesson that he apparently had, had learned from Gorilla Monsoon. And I, I just I thought that was great. And then in totally surreal, because, you know, again, with my dad's cable to scrambler, I was I hearkened back to SummerSlam 91 when this guy was going over Ted DiBiase and getting the million dollar belt. And here he is just ready to hang out in my basement for a couple hours. <laughs> so he takes about five or six steps into my house. And because he was early, I have two little kids and my wife and they're all home because you know they're gonna go over to grandma's or something a little bit in a little bit just to give us some space and time but my daughter was playing with her barbies 15 feet away from one virgil um and virgil starts regaling me with stories about andre the giant and andre the giant's particular uh women of the night that used to follow him around including a pretty graphic story. Pretty much the third story he told me was extremely graphic with my daughter about 15 feet behind him playing with a Barbie doll. And so he, I was in my dining room and I just had to keep my head down because I just couldn't look at Virgil because he was like, he was like pantomiming all throughout my dining room. And I just, I, I was, I just couldn't believe it was actually reality. I just had to keep my head down. And I, I'm like listening to my daughter playing with her Barbies, like, you know, 20 feet away. And then Virgil pantomiming, pantomiming Andre the giant, um, let's say just, uh, enjoying the, the company of some ring rats. So <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> those, those are my, those, those are my opening Virgil stories. Uh, Elliot, do you want to, you got one of your own you'd like to share with the, uh, the internet? 
Yeah, I mean, when I when I met Virgil, I'm sure there was like a million questions I could ask, but the only one that came to mind was, uh, did the million dollar belt really cost a million dollars? What was his answer? The answer, I mean, I don't remember. So I think the answer was it was nine hundred and sixty-eight thousand dollars, <laughs> and it is now in the lobby of the WWE towers, <laughs> and they and they have a special security guard who takes it up on at night and locks it in a safe. No I, idea if any of this is true, but it makes <laughs> it such a great story. I loved it. <laughs> That's pretty good. Wow. I. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> and of course, and, and of course, you guys can see the results, uh, the video over at max, maxoutband.com. Uh, but uh, you got him behind the drum set. Um, and I know we 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 had to uh, I, when I say giving virtual direction was kind of an interesting experience for me uh, for for the spot for, you know, uh, you know, the, 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 the I guess I can call it the table spot. Right. Right. Um, but man, Virgil can act. He can you gotta act. give him his Absolutely. acting chops. He is he is peeved off. Yep. Like, he is that knocking the sign off of the table is is him him going into business for himself. <laughs> yeah, I agree. No, I was absolutely impressed with Virgil's acting chops. He was great. It was funny because as soon as you'd get the camera rolling, he would nail it and then the camera would stop and he would turn to me and Elliot and say something like, you know, guys, I've been in show business for 30 years and I think what you guys need is a live crocodile in your band. I was like, what? <laughs> Where is this coming from? And he's like, yeah, you got to blow people's minds because you blow their minds and they'll listen to your music. And then, you know, you'll be playing live and the crocodile will come out on stage and snap at people. And I was like, Virgil, where are you going with this? And he's like, well, you want you want the crocodile in a cage because you don't want to like get a bunch of legal fees from it biting people. And I was like, yeah, well, you know, that's, that's a pretty good practical concern right now, right there. And then... And then the other suggestion that he had for us was to um, have an actual live deer. I, there was a, there's some type of weird. I don't know if he was at the zoo recently or not, but there was like definitely a parallel with these two suggestions that he had for us. And the deer, he wanted a live deer as well as a live crocodile, and for the deer to wear a wrestling onesie. Which, I, you know, it's a brilliant idea. If we can pull that <laughs> off, if, if anybody out there has a live crocodile that can, you know, play bass and a live deer that can play the drums, <laughs> we're, all, we're all ears. We'll, uh, we'll definitely give you a guarantee for every show we play. So anybody out there, contact us at maxoutband at gmail.com with uh, your live deer and or live crocodile um, musician. Making connections, just making making connections and <laughs> dreams happen. Apparently, maybe for Virgil, maybe Virgil's dreams. I it makes you it makes you kind of wonder. Um, but no, he was he was completely down with it, and I know uh, um, um, you know he, he still had stories for you guys afterwards uh, as 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 well. Um, so <laughs> I know my wife. I know my wife turned ran into your family at Dunkin' Donuts. Did you <laughs> did you ask them to leave? Or <laughs> no, as soon as Virgil started to make the erogenous grunts of one Andre the Giant. <laughs> My my wife heard him, and she was like, "All I heard from then on was just footsteps of her running around and grabbing clothes, and you know, baby carriers and all, and, and diapers and wipes and everything." And it was the fastest I've ever seen her put together a a, a care package to take the kids somewhere, anywhere, but the basement where I was filming a music video with the legend <laughs> Virgil. So I've never seen her move that fast in my life. Amazing, amazing. Well. <laughs> 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 Ella, do you have any other anecdotes? What was it like like to uh, perform with Virgil? I mean, it was a dream come true. I, you know, my whole life, I, well, not my whole life, but my <laughs> life from like thirteen on was like, I'm gonna get in that ring. That never really happened. Uh, <laughs> like actually in a ring, it was more like a backyard. <laughs> so <laughs> we've all been there. We've all been there. <laughs> <laughs> so being, being in the basement with Virgil, you know, is definitely. Uh, <laughs> It, it was out there, man. It was so out there, but it was a lot of fun. It was definitely a lot of fun. Yeah. I, he actually, we gave him our information, and then one day I was at work, and at 9 in the morning on a Friday, my phone rings with this strange number, and I pick it up, and I hear, Max out, baby! I was like, who's this? He's like, hey, it's your buddy Virgil. And he 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 just called me at nine thirty in the morning and just wanted to shoot the breeze. Apparently, like and this is afterwards. Yeah, this is like two weeks afterwards. <laughs> and he was he's just chatting away, and 
you know, I was at work and I was trying to keep my voice low because I didn't want my coworkers, to, you know, to think I'm a crazy person more so than they do already. Mm -hmm. And uh, all I really remember from the conversation was we somehow got on the, some topic. And again, it was about just other legendary professional wrestlers giving him advice. And he was like, Tito Santana always told me you got to work the shoulder. It's all about psychology. It was like this long, like philosophical treatise about the le the lessons of Tito Santana, which I, again, it was just like my moment in the dining room where I'm like, is this reality? What's happening right now? I have Virgil just like regaling me with stories about Tito Santana's life advice. I'm, I'm speechless. I, I don't know what to think. <laughs> I would like to say that Mike Sorg here was an absolute maestro on the camera, and he definitely put that. He had great a great directive eye. Like uh, there were some points where you know things could have easily fallen apart, but Mike absolutely nailed filming Virgil. And to that end, I, there's another story, Mike, that actually involves you. Where if you recall, Virgil was like, "What kind of music do you guys like?" And we're like, well, you know, hard rock, you know? And he's like, do you like Led Zeppelin? We're like, yeah, Led Zeppelin's cool. And he's like, let's listen to Led Zeppelin while we film this video. And we're like, well, we're actually <laughs> we're actually filming the video for right. our song. Right. That's it. And Mike was the one who was explaining this, you know, patiently, <laughs> that it probably wouldn't be a good idea to film, you know, us playing to Led Zeppelin since this is a music video for our song. But uh, yeah, Mike, Mike came to the, the forefront right there and really because right, i mean what do you do when you make a music you, you play the music that you're playing <laughs> exactly. to so you can sync it up later right exactly and yep. he wanted to listen to led zeppelin <laughs> while he drunk. yeah which next video next video yep. we're just gonna play led zeppelin the whole time just covers just you know I bet, another song. I bet he'll come back for free if <laughs> if you just say hey let's play some led zeppelin yeah. and get you behind the drums again uh at this point so um, but I, I, other than that, like, Virgil, Virgil was, I can't believe I'm saying this. Virgil was a joy to work with. <laughs> he absolutely was. He really was. He came an hour early. He stayed an hour late. He did everything we asked. <laughs> I left the half hour early because yeah. I was just like, I yeah. know, I, cause I knew where this was going. Right. And yeah. I had to be places. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the other thing was, I got to say, I, you know, I was really nervous about the table spot cause you know. You're basically for those for those on audio. When we say table spot, if you haven't seen, no, he's behind a table, and then the table turns into the into the drums, and yeah. and we there, there's some uh, rock and roll magic that happens. I think you guys did a fantastic job on Thanks. the editing, by the way, because um, again, I'm kind of looking at the setup, and I'm like, I yeah. don't know how this is gonna work, right? Right? Yeah. <laughs> yep. yeah, I was just I was really nervous because I didn't know what his reception to kind of basically doing a spot involving the lonely virgil meme would be like i i didn't know if that would offend him you know because right it is like kind of his post-career you know thing now is to basically be this website have you seen the project i've done with him <laughs> no we we asked him to set it up with the banner and everything and yeah. he even has his merch out really in, in his living room to conduct the interview <laughs> Nice. Legend of Virgil and his traveling merchandise. Table. I got to see that. Yeah, I haven't gotten a copy of that yet. I got <laughs> we'll to check that out. Work that yeah. out for you then. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah. It's uh, I mean, so he's down with it. Yeah, I mean, he's just he knows. You know, right. he just he just like well, hey, that's that's how I'm getting out there. That's 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 how this works. Right. Like, I think he sees this as a marketing potential for him. Yeah. So I mean, and he's probably awesome. right. Yeah, and, absolutely. And he is. I mean, yeah. it, with everything going on, we we, we know that the guys behind the Iron Sheik. Yeah, are doing a Twitter account now. Yep, right. Mm -hmm. So and those are the guys I pretty much contacted when we were setting this whole thing up. Okay, so you did go through them. Okay, yep. I, I was I was wondering about that too. Yeah. But I wasn't uh, sure if you got him directly or it was all them. through. So I know we 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 uh, we did ours before they were involved. I think uh, right okay. right before they were involved. Uh huh. Uh, so I, I, not me, Joe Joe Nebraska, of course. Yeah, right. Was, was producer on it, so he I don't even know what happened as far as the talk. He just like show up here. It's Virgil's place. <laughs> Bring your camera. We're doing this. I'm like, all right, Joe, whatever you say. Yeah. Whatever you say, here's a contract. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <Nobody>. exactly. <laughs> yep. No, so. that's hilarious. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was all set up through them, which involved me just getting a strange phone, phone call from Toronto at one point where it was just a conference call and all I heard was really distortion and, and Virgil's <laughs> muted voice in the background. And that was pretty much how we negotiated him coming out to my house. Was this totally surreal phone call with? Have you had a response from the team or from the Vir the Virgil Twitter account? They love it. They mm -hmm. they absolutely love it, and they even pushed it with the Sheik account. 
with oh wow yeah which wow. has half a million viewers which so. is the biggest i mean that, that that's everywhere i mean the yep. sheets being quoted on on at midnight yeah uh, last i knew like i think it's a regular thing on at midnight isn't it right so, yeah i, I mean, think it is too i'm waiting for the lonely virgil meme to be a regular thing yeah <laughs> i know yeah and really i mean that's the intriguing part of this whole thing is that me and elliot were pretty much brainstorming like their involvement and you know their motivation and i mean they have an actual real business and everything that they take care of so it was interesting just to kind of see underneath the hood or behind the curtain or what have you about how the, this whole operation about works. Dealing, dealing with stuff like that welcome yep. to the biz yep exactly all right well we gotta roll out of here but uh first i want to know um oh geez i need to adapt my questions for you <laughs> all right hey what are you guys watching these days as far as wrestling go for it elliot um i'm still watching raw i don't care what anybody says i still love it um i'm watching lucha underground um and i'm watching old wrestling um like like uh 19 stash what have we been watching man? oh god we've been watching everything pretty much all uh, the indies what is this wrestling not, that we've been watching? all the territorial yeah. like smoky mountain all the nice. territorial stuff nice. on, uh, in memphis of course that's a good rat hole to get down oh yeah we watched the one smoky mountain it was the first one we watched it was basically what me and elliot do is we pretty much just buy like 4,000 pizzas and just have stacks of pizza boxes around <laughs> us and from about midnight until we pass out we watch wrestling and uh the Smoky Mountain we watched, it was literally 17 straight minutes of Jim Cornette cutting promos. That's all it was. Oh, yeah. oh it is. 17 Absolutely. minutes. And then there was one match, which was a squash match with Chris, Can a fat Chris Candido. And then it was back to Jim Cornette. That was the whole show. Amazing. <laughs> but, I mean, a lot, of this, a lot of this, let's be honest, is us researching mullets. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> I love watching. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's all cultural stuff. It's mullets. It's zubas. It's like you know. I mean, that's that's the next step. I've been growing this hair out now. I mean, it's been damn like the near. Camera work. It's been damn near a year, and we're getting close. I'm going to be rocking a full, full mullet. I didn't know you were going in that direction. I thought you were just doing some tango and cash like stuff with that thing. <laughs> I'm turning it into a mullet, my man. Yes. <laughs> This is the best news I've ever heard. I'm glad. That <laughs> Breaking news right here yeah. on the Indie Mayhem show. There you go. Uh, anything else you're watching? You want to you want to plug? Uh yeah. I mean, I still watch Raw. Um, I, me and Elliot really like going and watching the Indies live. So around here, you know, we're we're checking out pretty much because we have the benefit of having so much live wrestling here. Oh, jeez. Yes. yes, it's awesome. Holy crap. Yeah, and then um, yeah, I mean, I. Honestly, I prefer live more than watching it on TV. I think the live shows are just awesome with the crowd participation and everything. So, so yeah, I mean, IWC is pretty awesome. We watch that quite a bit. Um, you know, PWX out in McKee Sport. We've gone to a few dimes. KSWA, all the goodies around here. Nice. Nice. Awesome. Um, and, and again, we usually ask, what's the best and worst thing about working in indie wrestling? <laughs> Um, what's the best and worst thing about working with Virgil? <laughs> um, I think it's fitting for 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 today. So yeah, definitely the stories, man. The yeah. stories killed. He's like a he's a true storyteller, and I mean he'll answer <laughs> any question. Yeah, he and just yeah. So I mean that was that was probably the most fun. I mean we could have asked him anything about the eighties, and he would have told us it was great. Yeah, I really can't <laughs> honestly can't think of a negative to be. <laughs> We had a great time. It's just we have a thousand stories now and it it's ridiculous. So I I don't really have anything bad to say. That's awesome. That's all. <laughs> Guys, go check it out. Maxalban.com. That's two X's. Maxalban.com. And on Twitter and on the Facebook as well. And YouTube with Virgil. Yes. What uh, what's coming up for you guys? What are your plans? Your album's out on iTunes. Yes, sir. We got our album out. We have some more videos in the works that we're we're putting together right now uh, right now we're really focusing on promoting our new album the big push that just came out a week and a half two weeks ago at this point and uh again ver the kayfabe music video is really our our first foray, foray into, into promoting it so please check out the video um i think you'll love it especially with its ties to professional wrestling i mean the song's called kayfabe for god's sakes and it's about being a jobber professional wrestler living life on the road. So obviously getting a jobber professional wrestler who lives his life on the road to star in it was a, uh, was a 
uh, some great serendipity that occurred and just fell into our laps. So everybody out there again, maxoutband.com, two X's. Please check out the album. Let us know what you think and check out the video. I think you will love it. Okay. iTunes, Amazon, Google Play. Thank you so much, guys. We're going to take a look at uh, uh, back to the 10-year party and see what other stories came from that over over our, our years here with the Wrestling Mayhem Show. And we'll be right back talking some more. Indeed. For the perfect time in the The first time I met the Mayhem was at uh, PodCamp 1, the, the very first one. That's why they call it PodCamp 1. It was later in the afternoon. I think it was two, I think it was two days then. Yeah, it was two days. Uh, it was uh, later in the day on Saturday, and Kanaki sees myself and Sick Puppy walking around. He goes, you know what? I've got some guys you need to meet. They're down in the basement. And we're like, okay, well, already the beer guys are being sent downstairs. This figures, but whatever. So we go downstairs, and he goes, go in here and uh, hang out with these guys. And it was the wrestling guys. We're like, wrestling, sure, we'll, we'll check this out. And when we went in, we were the only two in there. And there, Sorg has video of this. My big bald head is, like, right in front of the camera, down front, next to Sick Puppy. And little did we know, the whole thing filled up really quick. Uh, so we sat through the session, and we got the guys to uh, basically just kick the tar out of each other. They did... Uh, a kick to the face, I hit it with a chair, a few other things. So that was my first uh, real interaction with the Mayhem guys. And we bonded ever since because we figured wrestling, beer, beer, wrestling. Yeah, it kind of goes together. Hey, guys, Indie Mayhem Show. Check out that. Thanks to our friends looking for Group Pittsburgh uh, for the awesome, awesome party, the 10-year anniversary uh, way back in January and uh, a little bit of flashback stuff right there. And, uh, and and check them out. Should I drink that dot com a spoon that you're just hearing from? And uh, you know, the good old days. Eamon, hope you enjoyed that Sorry. interview. Hope you enjoyed that interview. A little bit of that, a little bit of Virgil stories. Uh, but I know you got a topic you want to talk about. I did. I thought, I thought it'd be a good time more than ever to talk about this topic, uh, uh, here, and particularly here on the Indie Mayhem Show. Uh, it's it for who are watching us as we're recording this on March eighth. Uh, it's International Women's Day. Oh, uh, in the yeah, exactly. Um, and I feel like maybe yeah, the, I think if you the indie show was the best place to talk about this, just from the fact of you know we, we've talked to a lot of women obviously on this show, and I think one of the the preceding topics, I guess you could say, that we always discuss is the opportunities. For women in wrestling, we've done you know some talk on like intergender wrestling as well and stuff like that, and and all the stuff that's you know possible uh, for a woman to do in wrestling. Uh, I think nowadays on mainstream television, particularly WWE, we're seeing obviously more folk women uh, showcasing more uh, athletically fit and, and capable women's wrestlers on television. I I don't know. I mean, I don't know about you, so, but I think a lot. Of was based off of stuff we were independence for many years. Right. I, and I think, I, I, I think you're right. I think it, this has been, um, a, a, a renaissance of women's wrestling say, um, there was actually a really interesting, uh, post today where they were showing the w- old women's belt, the, the, the last women's belt, uh, for WWE, uh, the Divas mat belt and the NXT women's belt, and they say women's division, mind you, on that show as well. Um, <laughs> and and I, I I responded to it, and I, I can't remember if it was on We Watch Wrestling's Facebook group or the uh, just the other just pro wrestling one that I happened to be on. Um, but uh, I really think the Divas title, the Divas label is outdated we made a reference to uh the edge and christian show where they make a reference to uh mr fuji's uh salt and how that Mm. is kind of a racist statement because it's the 70s we didn't know any better and i think looking at what the divas division represented back when that belt became a thing or even maybe even a little bit beforehand right um i think is a antiquated different era kind of situation because that's back when we were taking all the girls and doing bikini shoots, right? Not yeah. really putting on four-star matches, even. Three-star matches sometimes, right? Um, we're having the girls go fight the Budweiser 
bikini girls or whatever the hell at WrestleMania because that was a WrestleMania moment. Um, mm-hmm. No, I think we've come a long way. And I think um, all hail Triple H and, and friend of the show, Sarah Del Rey, Sarah Amato, uh, training down there, and uh, training the girls and the guys at NXT. Um, and you saw a little bit of that breaking, breaking ground as well. And yeah. how long have we had tremendous women's wrestling with shine WSU over the years, ring of honor representing Sarah Del Rey uh, shimmer shimmer. Yeah, shimmer. Thank, thank you. I knew I was missing one shimmer all those years. And, and, and just like we're looking at the landscape and we're seeing Dean Ambrose that came from CZW as the John Moxley, we're seeing Finn Balor has been doing all this stuff in Japan and England. We're seeing Kevin Owens. We're seeing Samoa Joe that have all done great stuff over these years. I think the women are stepping up and not just the women stepping up from the indies, but the women who did great stuff on the indies influencing the new girls walking in the door. Right. I think, I mean, it's, it's cool to think because I think, like you said, based off of that era where it was that still, you still had that lingering thing of like sex appeal was the seller for women for the most part. Uh, that was when you had people like Sarah Dome and, uh, you know, Daisy Hayes and, and cheerleader Melissa and I would think like all those women that were like kind of a branch of like that era of women's professional wrestlers uh, kind of come out and saying, you know what, we're going to do something different and we're not going to be, we don't have to fit that mold. Uh, and it, it seems like it's taking them a while. However, I think after so much, so much work put into changing that perception um, we finally kind of have gotten to a place where that is accepted and that is considered what is what it should be um i think that's really great i i also i think the best part about it is that you still have women continue to kind of push the boundaries and still try to do things different particularly in the independence where they're allowed to do different things um i know we discuss the topic a lot and it come up comes up a lot usually on on, on social media in particular of people with uh opinions both ways but uh of the whole topic of intergender wrestling and and uh, how that's kind of rose to prominence. Um, I really I I was really interested in a tweet that uh, that uh, came out today from uh, Joey Ryan, uh, who uh, tweeted out uh, uh, gender equality through intergender wrestling, particularly with Candice LeRae, who's his tag team partner, saved my career and reinvigorated my passion for wrestling. Wow! Uh, and I think that yeah, I think that's really cool. That you know. It's also widely accepted in the sense that, like, you know, it's it's something different. And then intergender wrestling has happened for many years. It's not just a new thing, but the fact that we're so widely accepting it and we're doing different things with it now and, and willing to tell different stories that we weren't telling, you know, five, ten years ago in wrestling is very cool. And, and who knows, you know, maybe that will become the norm. 10 years from now, just, just like the rise of, you know, talented female wrestlers kind of has, has risen. That's awesome. And especially something like that. Cause I mean, you think of Joey Ryan and you think of what he's doing and was he's famous. I just saw a, his penis move, um, um, eliminating <laughs> like 11 people from a battle Royal, uh, from over the weekend, which was hilarious. And I got two angles from fan cams from it. I thought that was great. Um, you know, it's, it, 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 that's it. I mean, it, 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 and people say, um, you know, there was a conversation on, sorry for the reference, but we watch wrestling. What I think it, no, wait, no, 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 no. Who was it? Was it Tony Mamaluke or maybe it was on, or on Jericho. I just listened to a lot of wrestling podcasts this week, but somebody was having a conversation yeah. about comedy and wrestling. And maybe it was, we watch wrestling. Now I think about, cause they were talking about pro wrestling gorilla and you know, is this a natural evolution? Is this a proper evolution of the sports entertainment? You know? Um, yeah. And I think that's a good question. And I think that's, you know, much like Chikara is its own thing over here. Well, I think it was, we watch wrestling cause they were, they were trying to figure out what that name was. No, no, maybe it was Jericho. I think it was Jericho. Damn it. Anyways, it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> um, listen to all those podcasts. It's in there somewhere. Um, but, uh, but no, I think, I think that's certainly one of those things where, um, the women's wrestling, the comedy wrestling, it's something different that you're not necessarily seeing on, on Monday nights. And it is a tr- it feels like a true alternative. But now that alternative is kind of seeping through a little bit, isn't it? 
Yeah, I think actually, I think the podcast you may have talked about because I think I listened to it too was the, I think it may have been the Jericho one with the Young Bucks when they were I, talking about. Uh, yeah, because uh, I think it was when they were talking about Kenny Omega stuff in Japan, where he was like wrestling, you know, eight year old girls and and blow up dolls and stuff like that. Like, right, right. Um, which, which the, I was listening to that one. It was really funny because like I felt like Jericho knew absolutely nothing about the Young Bucks. Yet, yeah. <laughs> yet, yet they had been on the show several times from from the way they were talking or something. Uh, is uh, that 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 vibe at the beginning was very peculiar to me uh, on that one. I'm trying to get more into. Uh, listening to those because there they really are great conversations that are happening over there of course um but anyways no i think i think you're right i think there definitely should be an appreciation of women's wrestling today international women's day um and 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 we're seeing it we're seeing it crop up it's a, it's becoming a bigger staple uh when you look at even even locally here with iwc and, and rwa both very much representing bow over the years has been doing queen of the ring and having regular uh, pretty, you know, significant people on um, 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 as a part of that as well. Uh, so I, I think that's great to see and see that growing and seeing, you know, the JCW, you know, the exotic women wrestling are just women wrestlers that we've talked about on the show. It wasn't just bikini girls, right? And yeah. I think that's significant that even the Juggalo crowd is not just yelling, hey, titties, you know, at these girls, which some, some are, some always will. Right. No, and, but and, and that and voice still that voice it's has, still there. Right, but, but that but that voice has gotten quieter, and the the voices there are saying, "Let's see some awesome women's wrestling." Uh, clap, clap, clap! This is awesome. Are becoming much louder than that person. That and also, I think there's been a progression to where when you hear something like that, it's not widely accepted. Like it's a case right. where people realize, like. No, that's not how you should be acting, kind of thing. It's like and, the, and, the one guy that walked up behind me at the Arnold Classic watching NXT over the weekend that started yelling, you know, hit him with a chair, bleed. You know, it's like this isn't that. And it's not going yeah. to be that. And you're not going to yeah. get that unless you're watching something highly uh, uh, irresponsible. Yeah, I and mean, there was a similar thing, and it, it kind of, I, I don't know if you saw this at all. It was like a Twitter sort of thing, really. It was, uh, because PWG had events this past weekend where uh, uh, a certain heel wrestler uh, uh, who was their champion at the time uh, used a, a six-letter uh, homosexual slur oh. towards his opponent. And there were people being like, no, that's not cool. And I, I my favorite thing was the response of people being like, oh, that's just good heel work. Like, you know, oh, you guys are getting bought in. You're getting, you're getting suckered by this guy's good heel work, you know. Uh, but it's. I think it's cool to see that people have progressed in that sense. Mm-hmm. Like I know a lot of the comments were uh, that I saw was like, "Oh, you wouldn't have liked it." You know, I, I can't imagine what you would have thought during the Attitude Era. It's like that's true, but like this also isn't 1999 anymore. Like this is 2016, where things aren't accepted like that. You know, but we do have a bit more of a mind towards uh, that kind of stuff, and also towards women and stuff like that. Like how we how we act and how we treat certain things so i think that's cool that we're progressing as a, as a, as individuals as individuals it, and, it, it, and it, like i said it, we've talked about this before looking back you know we mentioned the mr fuji thing but looking back all that stuff is there the dirty laundry is there on wwe network um yeah. i mean watching some old tuesday night titans where they visited the uh, one guy's home and there was very rampant references to alleged wife beating mm. And that was okay, guys, in the 80s on TV. Like, Vince okayed that. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like let's uh, wrap your head around that. To, I mean, I think that just shows Vince is not the guy to put women's wrestling over. Right? But yeah. Triple H is. And Triple H sees the opportunity there to let these girls go. And I think that's very significant and and, and and very good. And 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 again, that's trickling down or trickling up, I guess, more so uh, from from the indies. And we've had the tough questions. We talked to Darcy Dixon after the the International Pro Wrestling Day match, where everybody's like, "Ooh, I don't know about that." We just had giant yeah. muscle guys just beating down girls, right? And we're just like, I, I'm, like it just felt weird and wrong, and and not in the way I we think we should be feeling, even when the bad guy is doing a thing. Right. Yeah. So, just one of those things. We've been through a lot of this. So, uh, support in uh, women's wrestling. 
support the women in wrestling. <laughs> I, I, I think we should modify it for this week, for sure. Uh, support them. Support the girls here with IWC. Support the girls down with Inspire Pro Wrestling. So that's a good talk, Eamon. Um Hey, speaking of which, there is a show coming up this weekend. If you are in the Pittsburgh area or if you want to check it out afterwards, of course, be over on IndieWrestling.us. Um, but I think this is significant on a pro wrestling level as a whole. Um, in International Wrestling Cartel, IWC, IWCWrestling.com, is holding their 15th anniversary show. Nice. IWC 15, they're calling it. And uh, it's a pretty good, uh, I think it's going to be a pretty good affair here. Um, a lot of faces from over the years. Uh, friend of the show, Pedro DeLuca, is coming back. It's Pedro. You, I mean, uh, you, you're, this is only this is only important to you if you've attended the show and, and know what yelling the world the word "cache" at the top of your lungs means to myself and Joe Dabrowski and the rest of the crew. Um, <laughs> friends of the show, Jason Gorey, DJ Zima Ion, the former Shima Zion. I actually just posted some shows over at IndieWrestling.us of uh, of him as Shima Zion, the world champ against Ro, uh, Ray Rowe. <laughs> from November Pain 4 in 2009. Uh, some other old shows that we popped up there today, too. Dave Christ, who's been making some waves lately. Uh, RJ City returns to take on Colt Cabana. Looking that forward to that. Mr. Sports Entertainment versus Mr. Podcast, Mr. Art of Wrestling himself. Um, I think uh, if you're in the area, if you're trying to figure out what wrestling show to go to, I think this is a no-brainer. Um, there are other wrestling shows in the area. But I, I think I think this is going to be the hottest one in town, um, and it usually is when it comes to to these guys as well. Um, so um, I, I mean, let me just scan real quick, see if there's any other matches to note. Uh, Jimmy Nuts, world champ, and had a great match with uh, Darren De Niro last uh, two weeks ago at uh, uh, Proving Ground. He's taking on DJ Zima Ion, like I said, RJ and Colt Gory in front of the show. Andrew Palace, uh, La Russo's taking on Remy LeVay, another guy that we've talked to here on the show. Shane in your face. We talked about him last week mm-hmm. against Dylan Bostic in the rematch. Um, so I think there's going to be. I did see. I did see debut of Zachary Wentz. Is that is that a significant name to you? Uh, nothing I've heard of. No, oh. but uh, he's he's very he's very angry and emo from the looks of things. Well, <laughs> all right, maybe he'll maybe he'll take on uh, uh, Pedro DeLuca. I don't know. Uh, so go check out more information on that IWC Wrestling. Dot com IWC fifteen. Um, the other one's having a show this weekend. Thank you, Wheels, for actually putting this out earlier uh, in the night in the chat room. Uh, Vicious Outcast Wrestling also having a show. Am I right? Am I right? Yes, I am. Um, actually, you might be interested in this, and I, I'm kind of curious about this too. And 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 would you know if I wasn't already working a show, might might be checking this out. Um, it's called Lucha Vicioso Uno. You follow me? You follow me? Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> you, you, did, you did well, Sork. Thank you, thank you. Where's Garza at? Garrett Garza, how'd I do? Um, but it is a lucha show, I guess, for the most part. Um, I don't know much about this, to be quite honest. Uh, but they, they but VOW again, uh, really kind of pushing the interesting and different kinds of shows, right? And I can't even find a match listing. Maybe it's just going to be a lot of crazy lucha stuff. Um, I, let me. I, so I got the poster at least, um, so I can kind of. Um, I was going to say, is it going to be anything like a like a Texas lucha show? Because those are fun. Oh, okay. Those <laughs> those aren't fun. They're fun. They're fun for the wrong reasons. So. Uh, well, I don't know. Well, I'm looking at the the luchas. Like a lot of the regular cast of characters here, but um, the names that I haven't seen before: Rayo, Phoenix Fury, Worker Ant from Chikara, of course, Panda okay. Panda Mask. Um, Latin. Never yeah, heard of them. Latin Dragon. But I'm, but I'm immediately interested. Uh, Doctor Merte. That's a funny looking mask. But uh, Argus. Uh, but other than that, uh, from Chikara. Hey, that's a Chikara. Uh, okay. Argus. Uh, Ar- Argus is the, Argus is the gecko Roman wrestler. Tara Galloway, a uh, masked female. Uh, from the looks of things, probably taking on some. Yeah, I've heard of Tara. I think I've heard of her. But other than that, like the usual um, uh, round of characters from VOW, uh, Facade, Jack Pollock, uh, Super Oprah, Connor Claxton. Well, Connor Claxton, if you haven't seen it, the Sign of Respect show from VOW, uh, DVD mm-hmm. on viciousoutcastwrestling.com, digital at indiawrestling.us. Um, it's, uh, they combine their, their Hypersonic, which is their cruiserweight, and their Anarchy Hardcore title. 
Uh, so two <laughs> amazing results with Fasad and Connor Claxton there. This guy carries a giant wrench with him to the ring, and I believe he's from CZW, um, uh, uh, part of that crew. So go check that out. I'm curious that Gory is also on this poster at the same night. So we'll see how that plays out. Uh, I'm not going to lead into that. But um, but uh, otherwise, looking forward to uh, see what... I, honestly, I'm looking forward to both shows in certain respects to see what comes out of VOW and uh, and what IWC pulls off for their 15th anniversary. So uh, anything else on the Indies that we need to touch base on? I know there's no Around the Indies up just yet. I know Matt's been terribly, there is a, terribly uh, busy. Terribly busy. There is a show that... Uh, uh, even in my neck of the woods, I know it's vaguely in your neck of the woods because I know you've attended one of their events in the past. Uh, and I want to say you maybe have mentioned something about wanting to attend this show before. And based off of the cards that they've announced so far, I think you need to, Zorg. Okay. Uh, and that's AIW, uh, their Gauntlet for the Gold event, Ooh. which will be on the 18th. So it's a little while away. But I got to say, this card that they've announced so far may be. Like, I, I would be upset with you if you don't at least attempt to make this show. <laughs> is is that coming up, like, in a week? Uh, the 18th, so I think it's uh, next week. Unfortunately, I am working. Is it it's gone for the gold? I, oh, but I love that the Fullest House is their Saturday the 5th event. That, that yeah. Fullest House, just, we hope, is, is the title of this. Yeah. Wow. Um. Just to run through some of these matches, I think this was the one that kind of caught your eye immediately, was a uh, uh, friend of the show and someone who we both know very well, Ray Rowe of Rolano fame, taking on Lucha Underground's Pentagon Jr. Jeez. Which, yes. Jeez. Uh, they just announced, I think this week, uh, that Zack Sabre Jr., the new PWG champion from the UK, uh, will be fighting Ethan Page. Uh, we mentioned intergender wrestling, Alex Shelley taking on Candice LeRae. Wow. Uh, and so you also be, you'd be missing out on a wedding, uh, as a super cop, Dick justice is going to get married to, a uh, uh, legendary, uh, wrestling ballet, Missy Hyatt. Ooh. Oh, geez. They're just, they're just fishing for YouTube hits now. Holy crap. <laughs> Holy crap. And then of course we talked about the lap dance that happened. Last month with uh, Tracy Smothers and Jock Sampson in tow. Um, other significant match here, uh, like, because I always wondered what's the status here, but Johnny Gar- Gar- Gargano in a uh, four-way match with Cedric Alexander and Lewis Linden and Joey Janela. I'm not familiar mm-hmm. with that one, uh, but uh, interesting mix. Uh, so so I, I was wondering what his status is with NXT, but apparently he's in that weird not signed sign status. Yeah. Great. You know, good, seems, for, yeah. Good, good for him. He's kind of like the... Uh, the hottest free agent when it comes to that. So, uh, so good for him. I mean, to getting out there. And he was also, uh, you know, I said, saw him uh, taking on Ty Dillinger um, at the NXT Arnold Classic stuff as well. So, good stuff. Good stuff. I just wanted to mention that because that card looks absolutely amazing oh. so far. And it's only like halfway in out. So, yeah. A- AIW, go check them out or check them out online. They're, they're doing killer stuff up there. That's great. All right, I think that's all the indie wrestling fit to talk about that we're aware of this week. So thank you, my good friend, Eamon Payton from San Antonio, Texas, the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling. Check out all their stuff, inspireprowrestling.com. Smart Mark Video has a lot of their stuff. Uh, go check it mm-hmm. out. Absolutely. Um, also, uh, I, I mentioned probably too many times indiewrestling.us, but also uh, uh, a note that a lot of the best ofs, including the best of Dalton Castle, best of AJ Styles, and, and the like, are actually now available on Smart Mark Video, so you can get through that if you like that outlet. Uh, so uh, another great option for you guys to get your wrestling. Um, and uh, oh, we did get some inside info. Oh, it's in the chat room, so I guess we can announce this. Uh, RWA's March to Victory coming up here on March 26th is actually going to have Colby Carino um, on nice. hand. So uh, they're uh, no stranger to Ring of Honor talent uh, in there. They've had B- BJ Whitmer in the, in the past. And, of course, uh, some great stars, Sanjay, Sanjay Dutt, uh, Amazing Red are, are staples over the last year over there. Uh, so I'm loving to see them uh, step it up a bit as far as some of the, some of the people coming in and, and stepping up the competition as well for the guys that are there every 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 month um a lot of uh, great crew guys over there too so uh so check out everything uh wrestling mayhem show.com uh 
Good Times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, 412-206-WMS0. Check out all the things. Stream us live at WrestlingMayhemShow.com every Tuesday night, 9 to midnight Eastern time. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks, Eamon. Thanks, Org. Support some midi wrestling with women. Show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.